Because my school lunch sucks and I want to know what's behind the food. Oh, I do not eat lunch at school. And it is because of the low quality of the food here. Some of the worst food I had um, would have to be the Jamaican patty. Thing is, I flip the pizza over and it's just soggy. It's not cooked. I think it's very important for um, children to develop like healthy eating habits, especially when our country is in such a disparity when it comes to obesity and weight. Um, and I don't think that uh, our country is doing enough to bring awareness to this topic. So I think as students, it is important for us to advocate about this problem. When doing a film, the first thing you need to do is research. For most of the United States history, there was no oversight on what foods were being served in schools. This all changed after the Great Depression, when the draft for soldiers to fight in World War II brought about the realization that an alarming amount of young men weren't eligible due to lack of nutrients. This, coupled with the rising amount of kids attending school, led to a federal school lunch program being formed. School lunch was enacted in 1946, I believe, after World War II, because at that point in time, uh, what, the, what we started to realize as a country was we had World War II recruits coming, young men, coming to uh, sign up for the armed services, and they could not pass their physicals based upon nutritional deficiencies. And so Congress actually enacted school lunch as a ma uh, measure of national security. And can you tell us about the free lunch program and how it impacts them? Well, here in Hartford, we participate in the USDA program called CEP, or Community Eligibility Provision. And what that is, is a program under the USDA in the National School Lunch Program that allows us to provide meals at no cost to all students in the district, regardless of income. Hartford receives federal money to fund our free lunch program. And it's awesome that we have a universal free lunch program. Um, but that puts stipulations on what the food that we are feeding the students and um, the nutrition standards. So some of the guidelines are so strict, just even certain herbs and spices, you know, are not allowed. Although the idea of free lunch sounds perfect, there are still major problems that continue to affect the quality of the lunch program. One of the reasons that you took this job is because you felt strongly that the menus needed to be re revamped and students be given choices. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that you have done that? If so, how? Uh, we have absolutely increased and changed the uh, choices that have been offered on the menu. When I first came here, I've been here in Hartford since 2004. There was only one ch fruit choice a day, and it wasn't fresh. It was canned fruit. There was no choices, alternative choices at all. And so it was either hot lunch and no other alternative. And now we have chef salads available every day at all schools, including the schools that are rethermed with no production ability. We're making those at Buckley and shipping them over on a daily basis. What you're seeing here is the chef salads, and they're, getting, and they're preparing them and getting them ready to go through this machine. The sealing, the heat seal, is called a heat seal pocket machine. That seal is going to go over it so that we can serve it safely at the schools that don't have the ability to do any production. You're always looking for ways to improve it. We spend a lot of time talking about what did that look like? Did we like this? Do you think the students like this? What could we have done better? How could we season this a little differently? We have certainly nutritional guidelines that meet the diet dietary guidelines for Americans, and it's a challenge to make sure that we have a low-sodium product that still has a great flavor to it. And so how do you do that? I'd say, honestly, the infrastructure and the challenges of we are serving now about 35,000 meals a day between breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and operationally, that's huge. You're our customer, and you need to be happy with what we're doing. In the United States, an average of $1.50 is spent on a single student's lunch. This contrasts with other developed countries, such as those in Europe, where an average of $5 is spent on their lunch. In European countries, students have uh, different meals than we do here in the United States for several reasons. One, the time that they have for lunch is typically an hour and a half to two hours. You have 22 minutes, so there's a big difference in that. Around the money for school lunches, I think I probably have uh, maybe some harsh or unpopular opinions. They got money for wars but can't feed the poor. I'm not buying it.
on the money issue. We need to talk about historically how our communities have been shut out of those opportunities, you know? So it, we kind of give these reasonings um, for not having what our students and our families deserve that is a, a part of the narrative, right? And we're not telling the whole story. Um, so yeah, I, I, you know, we find money for our priorities in this country. That's what I know. I learned more of what goes on behind the food and what it's made of, I guess, not exactly, but um, I learned that our school lunch and our health is worth a dollar fifty. That's nice. Our health is worth a dollar fifty. No wonder why we're the number one obese um, country in the world. I mean, so, yeah. What I learned from doing this film was the um, extensive process that it takes for um, the food to be chosen and then for it to get to your tray. I learned that the problem isn't just what is being served in our cafeteria, it stretches further than that. If we want a functioning society with students being able to be prepared, we have to feed them correctly. We have to think about issues like this because they won't be able to focus, they won't be able to succeed if we don't give them the chance. Thank you.